This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about this story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 66 Greater Power Before Bacon, Caden began as he turned to look up at Valerius's handsome face. I want to see what you destroyed. Valerius's full lips quirked into a smile. Something you want before Bacon. Now that is a surprise. Caden's mouth opened and shut. Okay, I'd like both at the same time, but if I must choose, I guess Hellfire and Destruction first. Shioni had stopped her instructions to the claw to review the videos of who had triggered May's robots to go on a rampage. Do not worry, Caden. I will have bacon sent to you. Really? Uh, how fancy? You don't have to do that. Caden laughed self-consciously. He really should get his own bacon. Shioni had more important things to do, but she was already talking to someone in the kitchen, so it was a done deal. Not at all. I know Valerius will enjoy showing you his handiwork, Shioni said. Iolaire's tongue lolled out of the thought of bacon. Caden's stomach rumbled. He'd hardly had a chance to eat before Ilarion had spoiled things. At that moment, a claw appeared with a red silk robe for Valerius. The Dragon King shrugged it negligently on. Caden immediately mourned the loss of that beautiful form. Valerius didn't seem to notice Caden's discreet ogling but said instead, You must be curious about this then to give up bacon immediately. It is worth seeing, May remarked, as you will find out. I want to call you Iolaire, but... Caden. My name is Caden, he corrected her gently. She nodded. Caden. As you will find, being able to use your dragon gifts in your human form is rare. Being able to use one's greater dragon powers in your human form is unheard of. Until now, Esme said with a lifted eyebrow at Valerius. Hellfire, it is called Hellfire, is a greater power? Caden asked Valerius. Hellfire is impressive, Valerius answered, but it wasn't really an answer. More raised eyebrows from Esme. Are you suggesting, Valerius, that Hellfire is not one of your greater powers? That it is just ordinary? Valerius smirked. I must have some secrets, Esme. If I ever considered you an open book, I will now eat those words. Esme laughed, but not unkindly. So, show me this destruction, Caden pressed, bobbing up and down on his heels. Of course. Valerius looked a little pleased. Iolaire was wide-eyed in Caden's chest, clearly excited and a little nervous to see evidence of just how powerful Valerius and Raziel were. I look forward to speaking to you later, Caden. Valerius, I will tell you what I find as to my robots. May then swept out of the room following a clanking Adama and a straight-backed Captain Simi. You cannot leave us now, Caden, Tess's lower lip wibbled. We have just found you, and look at Alarian's face. He is so desperate to be around you as well. That had a smile appearing in Tez's own mouth for just a moment. Alarian, however, did not smile. In fact, his eyes narrowed and his expression darkened. He turned on his heel and stalked off, not saying a word. I guess he doesn't want to be mates with me anymore, Caden remarked dryly. What a shame. Valerius's tone was even drier. Caden grinned up at him. And here I was, worried about revealing who I was to everybody. This is going great! Valerius embraced him and kissed the top of his head. When they broke apart, though Valerius kept one hand firmly on Caden's lower back, Caden looked over at Tez and Esme. Tez's hands were clasped in front of his chest, and he was beaming at them with suspiciously moist eyes. Esme was smiling like a proud grandmother. Caden pinked. Uh, do you guys want to see the destruction too? Caden asked them. To his surprise and delight, both of them nodded eagerly. Valerius led the four of them out of the castle and into the courtyard, towards a set of broad, wide steps around the corner. Caden and Valerius held hands while Tez, gentlemanly, had offered his arm to Esme. 
As they walked, Tez peppered Caden with questions and statements. You are so young, Tez remarked. When Caden smiled uncertainly, Tez continued, It is not a criticism. I mean, how can one be criticized for one's age? It is chosen for us, and our concept of time continues it for us. It is a conceit, really. But what I meant is that I am so used to shifters looking young, but not really being young. Do you understand? And for a dragon shifter to be so, so... Innocent? Valerius's lips twitched. No! Fresh! That is the word I was looking for, Tez says with a bah at Valerius. Innocent, uh, inexperienced, very new, fresh, I guess works too, Caden admitted. You're bold to be so open with us, Caden. Most shifters try to be cagey, Esme remarked, but she was smiling gently at him. It wasn't a criticism, or maybe it wasn't a criticism about talking to them this way, but maybe not so to others. I think if I were to describe myself as anything else, it would be hard to believe anything I said, Caden explained. So, not only is being a shifter, a dragon shifter, no less new to you, but the world is as well. Tez looked rather stunned at the thought of it. He shook himself. It is good that we are all here then. Good. Valerius had that dry tone again. I thought you were here to woo him, Tez. Tez smiled at Valerius and waved a hand, as if any such thought were foolish. I was here to meet him above all, but now I see that we must all work together to help him, to teach him. It is so exciting. I've always wished to have another dragon to train. Caden isn't a pet, Tez, Esme reminded him gently. Yes, I know. Tez's quick glance at Caden told Caden that he was thinking of him a little bit as a pet. Though Iolair is adorable, Esme added. Yes, Tez was jubilant again. But not as pretty as Elderon. Valerius was actively suppressing a smile as he said this. Tez shrugged. No other dragon is. Elderon is beautiful, Caden said kindly. Oh, Elderon is so pleased. Elderon thinks that Iolair and it should fly together. Gold and white, such a pair together. The people of Reach would have never seen such beauty. Tez stretched a hand out to the sky, as if he could imagine it right then and there. Um, that would be great, but you did see how hard it was for me to land last night, right? I'm still learning, Caden reminded him. Valerius makes sure they don't squash anybody or anything. Valerius tightened his arm around Caden's, and Valerius would be a part of any flying. Caden grinned up at him. He really only wanted to fly with Valerius anyway. Talking about yourself in the third person now, Valerius, Esme teased. If I must get my point across, Valerius rubbed a thumb along the back of their linked hands. I don't know if black goes so well with white and gold, huh? Tez sighed. But if it must be, it must be. It must, Valerius said simply. They'd reached the top of an impressive set of stone steps that curved downwards into the side of high reach. There were torch holders on either side of the stairs. Caden thought that if it were lit torches, it would look quite like the entrance to a medieval dungeon. But the thick metal door that lay sprawled before them like a fallen soldier broke the illusion. Caden released Valerius's hand and clattered down the steps. He knelt down and touched the metal. The hinges were wrenched off. He couldn't imagine the force it took to cause the door to be like this. The robots did this? Caden looked up at Valerius. The Dragon King's hands were slid into his robe's pocket. He moved with his usual predatory grace. A faint smile was on his lips that was almost embarrassed. No, I did. Valerius answered, stopping a step above him. Seriously? Kane's voice was hardly above a whisper as he looked back at the door that likely weighed half a ton. Dragon shifters are very strong, Tez told him helpfully. I know, but... Caden shook his head as he slowly got to his feet. I just didn't think. I don't know. I guess seeing is believing. And doing is even better, Esme said. Why don't you try to lift it, dear? Caden's eyes widened and he wiped his hands on his jeans. Oh, I can do that. I... You're a dragon shifter. Of course you can, Tez enthused. Caden's gaze slid to Valerius. Surely the dragon king would put an end to this silliness. He was a dragon shifter, sure, but he was a little dragon shifter, and he wasn't in his dragon form now. Go ahead, lift it, Valerius said with a tip of his head. 
When Caden gave him a you're crazy look, he added, one-handed. What? Caden squawked. You're making this even more impossible. Valerius just smiled. You can do this, Caden. Caden muttered, don't laugh if I can't do it. I might be able to manage to nudge it, maybe. Maybe. Ayalair twittered at him, blinking and shuffling its wings happily. Caden didn't know if Ayalair thought he could do this or was simply giving encouragement. Caden leaned over and put the fingers of his right hand underneath the door. He fully expected to have to strain to even make it wobble. So he put his all into it and the door flew upwards and then flew down again on the other side before sliding down a few more steps. Caden's mouth opened in a gasp. Iolaire let out a triumphant coo. Whoa, did you see that? Caden whipped around to face Valerius. The Dragon King was smiling. I did. He looked at Esme and Tez. You saw that too, right? That was so cool. Both dragon shifters smiled encouragingly at him. Tez clapped. So fresh, you see, everything is new again, Tez stated. It makes me feel like anything is possible once more. It makes me remember the gift that being a shifter is. Caden caught sight of Valerius's face out of the corner of his eye. There was a sudden understanding expression on the Dragon King's face. He felt the same as Tez, and Caden was pretty sure that he felt some of Tez's excitement at Caden experiencing this whole new world. There was a clattering sound as the door shifted and slid down a few more steps, all but blocking their path. Um, Kane began, should I try to move that? I hope you're enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Many more adventures await our Dragon Shifter couple, but not until the next episode. If you're looking for another story full of hot heroes, romance, and magic set in an alternative world, check out the first book of my series, Cinders and Ashes. Cinders and Ashes is an elaborate gay retelling of Cinderella, but it's so much more than that. It's set in a world with forbidden magic, an heir made to work as a servant at his own estate, hidden heritage, enchanted wolves, and a king who wishes to marry for love. A link to book one is in the description below. You've had enough fun with that door for today. Let me. Valerius leaned over and with one hand lifted the door up and handed it to Esme. Would you put that above us, Esme? Of course, Esme answered. She took the door with the same ease and lightly tossed it back up into the courtyard. It landed with a clatter. Caden couldn't help the gasp of awe he let out. Okay, I'm sorry, but that was incredibly cool, Caden laughed. Esme curtsied and let a delighted young girl's giggle. The four of them shared a look then. There was a connection here. For the first time, Caden didn't feel completely singular. The connection he had begun to have with Valerius grew, even as he felt new connections. Not as strong, but still there with Esme and Tez. I'm, I'm really glad to have met you, Caden said suddenly. Yes, dear. I am too, Esme told him as she nodded. Most certainly, if for nothing else to see Alarian so humiliated. Tez slapped his thigh with childish glee. I second that, Valerius murmured, even as he caressed Caden's cheek with the back of one hand. Caden's gaze slid to the other two dragon shifters to see what they thought of this open display of affection. He had started it by running to Valerius and revealing himself, not caring about his secret or anything else. But after smelling that bitter metal fire and feeling the earth tremble, he'd have done anything to make sure Valerius was okay. A knowing, fond look was on Esme's face. Tez just seemed fascinated, as if he were watching a bear playing the ukulele. So, we going to see the results of Hellfire? Caden asked, even as his cheeks spurned. After witnessing what was possible with the door, Caden really wanted to see the destruction. Valerius linked their nearest hands together and led them down the stairs. Esme, I thought only you could use magic when you weren't in dragon form, Caden said over his shoulder. Magic? Esme let out a laugh. Oh, well, I suppose our powers are that, but no, every dragon can use some of their powers in human form. But which ones and how many are kept secret from everyone is the question, Tez explained. Oh, but why? Oh, my God. 
Caden breathed the last as they stepped through the doorway and entered the dungeon. The floor was covered in gleaming metal. It was no longer liquid anymore, but a solid two-inch thick layer over three-quarters of the stone floor. There were unrecognizable chunks of parts of robots that hadn't completely turned to slag. All those robots, oh man, may must be pissed, Caden laughed softly. More upset that someone got past her precious firewall, protecting her control of them, Valerius answered. Tez whistled as he and Esme spread out to survey the wreckage. You are formidable, Valerius, Tez remarked approvingly. I mean, I knew that, but still, seeing is believing, I am like Caden in my shock and admiration. Alarin should see this. Esme was tapping her chin and looking over the carnage with an almost cold approval. Why? Caden asked. You heard him, Caden. He thinks he could win in a battle between Valerius and himself. This would show him how foolish such a belief is, she answered. Caden felt as much as saw Valerius tense and his eyes narrow. His temper and the violence that he controlled so well were suddenly right beneath the surface. A tissue-thin layer of civilization was hiding the Dragon King beneath the human. Caden's breath caught and he looked at Valerius. The moment Valerius saw the fear in his face, the violence bled out of him and he cupped Caden's cheek. I won't let Alarian even try to attack you. I'll, I'll make it so he can never shift again. Caden's hands fisted at his sides. I, Olair, let out a trill of agreement. So fierce, Valerius smiled at him fondly. But I think that a confrontation between Alarian and myself is inevitable. Alarian must put his hand in the fire and be burned before he realizes he can be harmed. You shouldn't do that, Caden cried. What? Why? Valerius looked between them. Esme sighed and tilted her head towards Tez. Caden? I know I suck at secrets, Caden cried. But I know we can share with this with Tez. I feel it. Iolair feels it. Tell Tez what? Now Tez was speaking in the third person. Iolair was cocking its head as it cooed, not in the same way as it did at Raziel, at Tez. Tez's eyes grew huge and he put a hand on the center of his chest. Iolair! I, I, I can see it. It is cooing at me in Elderon. Tez was now weeping with joy. Oh, Elderon and I are now complete. Valerius looked at Caden. Aulair is, is cooing at them? Caden grinned and put a hand on Valerius' arm. Not the way Aulair does to you and Raziel. It's a different cooing. And then Caden blushed so hard that his cheeks felt like they were on fire. He might have just revealed more than he should despite him having seen how the separation between Iolair and Raziel was breaking down, he didn't think Valerius knew. He wasn't sure why. Maybe it was because Valerius was too close to see it, that things had been the same for so very long. I see. It was Valerius's turn to blush. He lowered his head and wouldn't quite meet Esme and Tessa's eyes. Esme, tell them about the faith and war, Caden urged her. With a deep breath, Esme nodded and pressed the tips of her fingertips together beneath her chin before telling Tez and Valerius everything they had learned from Valerian and her own investigation into Sarai. Caden turned to Tez. Have there been any violent activities by the faith in your territory, Tez? Tez's forehead furrowed, but then he shook his head. The faith is not strong in my territory. You see, my territory is filled with many native peoples who were forced to accept Christianity. What they did was to incorporate their already existing beliefs in Christianity together. When shifters were revealed to be real, they just, well, incorporated some more. Christianity just got a larger pantheon, but nothing truly changed. Esme crossed her arms over her chest. I suppose you were lucky in a way, Tez. Belief in religion in my territory was all but gone. It still remained in a sort of historical, almost secular way. But after shifters were revealed to be real, it was like a tidal wave drowned everyone in shock. Their minds, so used to believing there was nothing more than what they could experience with their five senses, suddenly were shown to be completely unreliable. The faith has taken off there. Sometimes, sometimes it worries me. Even though you have used it to control your territory at times, Tez pointed out. Esme waved a hand through the air. I know that you think of yourself as a dragon of the people, Tez. But you must understand that I am not you and my people are not yours. Tez bowed to her. You are right. Forgive me, Esme. I just remember how the powerful rule of peasants through religion in the past. It grates. 
Of course it does. You were controlled in the past, not the controller. Now you seek to give people choice and the illusion, if nothing else, that they are in control of their destiny, Esme said. But if the faith truly is seeking to sow discord among us, then not even your territory, with your faithful little workers, will be safe for long. We can't have a war. That would be crazy. So many people would die. Caden looked at what Valerius had done with Hellfire. So many people would die. Valerius grasped his chin and forced Caden to look at him. Do not be afraid, Caden. Caden caught hold of Valerius' wrist. How can I not be? They're going to use me and Iolaire as proof that their crazy plan is the right one. Plant a bomb and get the ninth dragon shifter. What are a few lives compared to that? Caden's words caused a hush to fall over all of them. He knew he was right. Iolaire was making low, sad sounds. It, too, feared that violence was coming, a tidal wave of it, and that it would touch all of them and more. Uh, how do we stop this? Tez lifted his hands into the air in helplessness. How do we stop what? came a bright voice from the doorway. All of them turned to see a golden-skinned woman who stood over six feet. Her arms and midriff were bare. She wore a top of what looked like folded green banana leaves and a multi-layered skirt that came to her knees. Her feet were bare and she held what looked like a hoverboard in her right hand. Long black hair that hung in loose waves down to her waist framed an expressive, pretty face. Kayla! Esme proclaimed and immediately enfolded the newcomer in an embrace. Esme, my dear sister, my fellow water goddess, how I have missed you, Kayla proclaimed. They bust each other's cheeks before breaking off and looking at one another with evident fondness. Kayla caught sight of Caden over Esme's shoulders and her bright blue eyes fixed on Caden. She walked slowly towards him, a look of almost awe on her handsome features. She lightly took his hands in hers. Ninth dragon shifter, she murmured. I am Kayla, the turquoise dragon and queen of the seas. I hope you enjoyed this week's chapter. Just a reminder that if you join Wraith Rain as a member, the membership is 15 to 20 episodes ahead of the free podcast. If you'd like to join and listen to all those extra podcasts, not to mention getting access to the other stories and manga on Wraith Rain, a link is down below.